Good morning and welcome. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Got several announcements uh, to make this morning. We want to welcome Jessica back leading our service. And uh, she's going to be here next week and to make it three in a row. That's right. And I think hopefully going to be here at least that many times next month as well. Uh, we, we met again Wednesday on our ministry information packet, if you will. Uh, I think we've got all the information gathered together now. I think I've got all of it in my possession. Uh, and we're going to start compiling that. And hopefully within a couple of weeks, we'll have that in a completed form. Let everybody look at and get it ready to be sent off, distributed, and uh get the process going looking for a, for a permanent pastor. Uh, in give, give God 30 this morning, there was a lot of, we had a lot of prayer topics, if you will, people to pray about, uh, that sort of thing. Our word for last week was trust, and we talked about that a little bit. Our word for next week is influence. So, so think about that. Keep that in your prayers. Uh, what influences you and what influence do you have on others? Uh, we talked a little bit uh, Wednesday pr after the, uh, the business meeting prior to uh, practicing the hymns. We talked a little bit about the fifth Sunday service that we're going to have in June. It's going to be primarily a service in song. Uh, there's a Broadman hymnal out on the table in the foyer. Do we have a Pres uh, there's uh, another Methodist? Broadman. There's a Methodist and a Broadman on the table right back. Okay, by the we kitchen. have a Methodist hymnal, and of course we have our own, the blue hymnal, which in somebody's wisdom left out a bunch of the old time hymns. So anyway, if there's a hymn, uh, Look in any of the three hymnals, the Methodist hymnal, the Broadman hymnal has a lot. It's an old hymnal. It's got a lot of the old time hymns in it. So uh, if you have a favorite, look it up. Get it. Get a card. Write down the hymn number and which book it came from. Uh, we're going to have a, a program. What we're going to do is from all the requests, suggestions, and what have you, we're going to narrow that down to we decide to about 20 hymns uh, will will be enough for a, about an hour long program. So uh, write down your favorites. Uh, again, if you want to put them on a card, write down the hymn number, or just write the hymn name itself and, and we'll get that information together. Uh, we'll be sharing a little bit more about that uh, as time comes and we'll be working a little bit on putting the program together uh, for the fifth Sunday in June. Uh, received a note from Jody Beth Melton this morning. Uh, she asked that I pass on her thanks to this church for their support uh, at Philip's service uh, and the prayers and the thoughts uh, that came her way during this difficult time for her. She said she thanks this church very much. Uh, we've talked a little bit uh, two about a summer program for kids where we're working to flesh that out a little bit. Uh, the thoughts are that we're going to have some kind of uh, 
maybe one day a week here at the church, a program for kids, snacks, a movie, activities, whatever it comes out to be uh, for kids around the community. So uh, y'all be thinking about that. Keep that in your mind, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, end of school is just around the corner, so we want to get that started pretty quickly. Uh, Kim informed me there's going to be some light snacks, refreshments after the service, so hang around and uh, see what kind of goodies we're going to have today. Uh, uh, another surprise meal. I like those. <laughs> Well, we're kind of in between birthdays. Uh, Marcia's birthday was yesterday. Uh, <coughs> Margaret's birthday is coming up in a couple of days on the 21st. And uh, so we have an opportunity to sing happy birthday this morning if, if Vicky's got some music. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. <laughs> if there's no announcements or anything, the service belongs to you, Jessica. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The clock up here that I usually look at to gauge the time is not got the right time, but I've got my phone, so hopefully we'll all stay on track. It's going to be a three-hour sermon. Y'all get ready. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's open in prayer. Holy Spirit, Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, you are everywhere present, and you fill all things. Treasury of blessings, giver of life, make the fire of the Father's love known to us today as we remember the day of Pentecost when you poured out your spirit and it settled like tongues of fire on all flesh. Be with us as we wait and watch for your transformation of our lives and of this world and grant us your peace. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Please join me in today's call to worship, found in the front page of your book. Our God comes to us in the breath of the Holy Spirit. Our God visits us from the throne of heaven and sets us aflame with amazing joy. Our God opens our paths to new visions and guides our feet in his wisdom. Come, Holy Spirit, come into our hearts, our church, and our lives. Standing as you're able, let's sing together our first hymn, 420 in the hymnal, God of grace and God of glory. And we will be skipping verse 3. <coughs>
difíciles. Let's take a moment to examine the state of our hearts. <clears throat> and let us confess our sins against God and against our neighbors together. Almighty God, without your love and forgiveness, we are lost. We have done and said those things which we should not have. And that which you desire for us, the Spirit filled all things. We have left undone. Forgive us, Lord. By your purifying fire, forgive and transform our lives. Guide us into honesty and compassion, so that filled with your peace and your Spirit, our dreams and visions may be in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the good news. God is more faithful to forgive us than we are to sin. So receive God's comforting words. Because of the cross, we have been forgiven of all of our sins. Our hearts have been washed clean, and we are free to live in his peace. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Let us pray before we read the scriptures. Lord Jesus Christ, eternal word, beloved and faithful son of the Father incarnate, we ask today that you would share your knowledge of the Father's heart with us. We thank you for the promise that any time two or three of us are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst of us. Holy Spirit, baptize our souls with your peace. And bring your fire to this place so that our hearts and minds will be illuminated as the scriptures are read and proclaimed. And let us hear with joy what you would have to say to us today. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Today's scripture readings come from the book of Acts. They are best found on the back page of your bulletin. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven, like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And all heard them telling in their own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to each other, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. These men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yes, and on my manservants and my maidservants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I shall show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the day of the Lord comes, that great and manifest day. And it shall be that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <coughs> the word of the Lord. So Nick said we were in between birthdays today, sort of. Pentecost in, in the tradition of 
of the church in general, of Christianity. Pentecost is the birthday of the church. When the Spirit comes and falls on the disciples there in the upper room, it marks the moment for the first time that people go out without fear and proclaim the good news of God. And so when the church starts acting like the church, we call it the church. So today, we, we kind of, if there is a thing, we would consider today to be the birthday of the church that we remember. So, everybody's there just minding their own business, and all of a sudden, tongues of fire. All of a sudden, people start speaking different languages. All of a sudden, sounds of mighty rushing winds. And this time, instead of the disciples being terrified about what happened, they're joyful. And they go out and they start telling everybody the mighty deeds of God. And the people hear them. They hear them in their own languages. We're all speaking the same language for the first time since the Tower of Babel. And if you remember the story of the Tower of Babel, people had come together to build this tower to make a name for themselves to speak of their great and mighty deeds. But now God says, oh, you'll speak one language again, but it will be for my name to tell my great and mighty deeds. And this, to God, who exists outside of time, this action of pouring his spirit on the whole earth is still happening. It happens moment by moment and day by day even if it doesn't appear that way. And because this is the birthday of the church, no birthday is complete without gifts. So the Holy Spirit is God's gift to us to empower us to reach the world with his salvation. But it's a gift. No one had to do anything to deserve this gift. No one had to work to earn the Spirit to fall on them. They didn't have to be perfect in that moment. They didn't have to be sinless. All they had to be was gathered together in one place. That's an amazing gift. God puts His Spirit inside of us and gives us power and courage to proclaim His name throughout the world. And on that day, 3,000 people were saved. Peter's first sermon probably exceeds the first sermon of everybody in, in the existence. 3,000 people came to know God that day. God asked us to participate with him in sharing the good news. His kingdom has come so near, so close, that language can't separate us. Language can't be a barrier to God's message anymore. So I was thinking, you know, if, if people are speaking in every language, there are more languages than just the words that come out of our mouths. So there's like Spanish and French and German and English. But sometimes the only language that people can hear that speaks so loudly is the language of the actions of our lives. When Jesus enters into the ministry for the first time, he says that the Spirit is upon him. And what he says that means is that the Lord has anointed him. This is from Isaiah 61. The Lord has anointed him to preach good tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to free from prison all who are bound, to pray, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to comfort those who mourn, console those who weep in Zion, to give beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise instead of heaviness, and make of us trees of righteousness planted by the Lord. So I was thinking about what it means for the Spirit to rest on us. And certainly, there are ways that we need to be talking and telling all that we need. Yes, God loves you. God cares for you. 
God loves you so much that Jesus put on flesh and came and he was crucified, died, buried, and resurrected for our salvation. And he wants to share that with you, right? We need to tell people this. But it's not only in words that we can speak God's salvation to people. His mighty deeds include those things, like the deeds of our everyday lives. There's this poet who lived in the Middle Ages. And she has this beautiful poem, and she says, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Your eyes are the eyes with which he looks with compassion upon this world. Your feet are the feet with which he walks to do good, and your hands are the hands with which he blesses the world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. But this seems like such an overwhelming task. And we may wonder, who are we to be given such an important work to do? Who are we to be able to participate in this with God? We read in Genesis that when God creates humanity, he puts his breath inside of the man he has made it, and then he becomes alive. In Hebrew, the breath of God is the same word that we're reading here in Greek as spirit. So with the first breath that each of us took, when God breathed us into life, he filled us with his spirit. So good news. If we're still breathing, his spirit is still falling fresh on us daily. With every breath we take, we find proof that we are living witnesses to the great deeds of God. And he still has more work for us to do. And even when it feels like we don't have the strength or courage or opportunity to share this love with others, we can still pray for them. Remember, one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is praise for us. And moves us to prayer for others, especially when we don't know what to pray. But also, there's a twist to this. We are called to proclaim this to the world, but we're also called to proclaim it to our own hearts. Because the Spirit has made us one with each other in the great body of Christ. That's who we are. We are his body. We are one. We also need to be sharing this good news with ourselves. We need to remember that Jesus came to save and heal us and make his love known to us too, that we also are chosen and beloved. And he wants us to be part of his great plan to draw all creation back to himself. But more than that, We are the church. We are the bride of Christ. And every time we gather together, like these disciples gather together, every time we come together, whether it's in church or where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst of us. So when we come together, we become something so much more than ourselves. And just our being around each other is what God uses to relight that fire, to refill us with the vision of his spirit, to remind us of his great deeds of power. Every hug that we give to each other when we come in the mornings is presence of God, proclaiming liberty to the captives and comforting those who mourn and giving the oil of gladness. Every time we come and eat together or fellowship together or play dominoes together or even when we come to complain to each other. This is part of the work of God. This is how the kingdom comes. It comes when we're together. And this is a gift. This is how God will change the world. We don't have to be holy. He makes us holy. We don't have to be sinless, pure, devout, religious. He makes us those things as we participate in what he wants for us, in his will. And that's sort of the icing on the birthday cake of the church. Not only are we crucified and resurrected with Christ and have ascended with him into the holy places, we are now his dwelling place. 
He comforts us and he transforms us. And so he gives us the ability to go and set the world on fire with the love that he's put within us. So happy birthday to us, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the church, forever inseparable from Jesus. Wherever we are gathered together, he is there with us. It's his power working through us. He is proclaiming his own great and mighty deeds moment by moment by moment. And we get to witness that. And as we do, that fire will spread. Jesus says he comes to set a fire on this earth. And this is the fire. It's the fire of the spirit of the proclaiming of his great and mighty deeds. And it will set the world on fire. We just have to be present to it. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Next, I think it's the Apostles' Creed. I lost my paper. Yes. Standing together, we'll say what we believe. It's on this laminated card. Saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into the hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Staying standing, if you'd like. Our next hymn is 316. Breathe on me, breath of God. Come forward to uh, receive the offering.
are you, Lord God, of all creation. All good things come from you. And through your goodness, we have these gifts to humbly offer back to you. Gracious God, accept and bless these gifts of our lives, our time, our talents, the works of our hands, and our love for one another. And use them all for the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 All right. Time for prayer requests. Pray for our church to find a pastor and pray for the pastor who God has prepared to lead this church. Pray for our brother Eddie, who is dying of cancer. He's Daisy's neighbor. Pray for Daisy and her family as they try to help proclaim God's love to him in this time. Um, I have a friend named Allie who is being ordained into ministry this afternoon. So let's keep her in our prayers. For who and for what else can we pray today? Royce. Uh, you know how the, the end of May is a graduation day uh, for not only high school students, but for college students too. So uh, uh, I'd like for us to pray uh, a blessing on all those students that are graduating uh, this month. <clears throat> Amen. What else? Let's pray for Judy Blackwell. She's uh, on her fourth round of chemo. She's doing well. But uh, she just had chemo on uh, Thursday. And so now she's uh, struggling with some side effects for the next few days. Pray for her to have strength. God to heal. Amen. Hello. I want to thank God for our new visitors this morning. <laughs> and uh, we're just so happy to have them. And they are the uh, new owners of Roll Harper's House. Yes. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Any other prayers or praise? Um, all right. Trusting that God hears us when we call out to him. In peace, let us pray to our compassionate, gracious, and merciful Lord for the needs here and the needs of the whole world. Most merciful Father, we, your children, thank you for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Lord, we pray for your church, made one in the Holy Spirit, present here today and scattered all over the world. We thank you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. We thank you for Allie answering the call into ministry, and we pray that you'll be with her, Lord. And give us all such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. We pray for those who do not yet believe, for those who struggle with doubts and fears, for those who have lost their faith, and for those strong in their faith, that they would be good examples and witnesses to your love. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, May bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. 
We pray for blessings of abundance and protection over crops. And we pray that we would be thoughtful, wise, and generous in the use of this world you've created us for us. We pray for this community, this nation, and the world. We pray for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, and for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. We pray for all people everywhere, for our families, friends, neighbors, strangers, for those who feel alone and hopeless, and those who feel they have no one else to pray for them. And Lord, especially we pray for those who have wronged us, for those whom we have wronged. Bless those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, and all who shine forth your love in the ordinary ways of their daily lives. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. Lord, we pray for our brother Eddie. We pray for comfort, peace, and that you would give him such an awareness of your presence that he is held closer to you and his very next breath, Lord. Give Daisy and her family courage and peace and comfort. Let them blaze forth with the light of your glory so bright that he'll be able to see. Lord, we bring our church before you. We pray not just for the needs of this congregation specifically, but we pray that you will be preparing a person that is your leader for this church. God, you know the plans you have for us. And there are plans to prosper us, to give us a future and a hope. So we pray that you will give us wisdom in looking for pastor. We pray that you'll give them wisdom when they're looking for their next church home. We pray for Judy Blackwell for healing, comfort, and strength during this time. Lord, we also lift up all those in this congregation who need healing, who are continuing in their recovery. We pray for all the needs of those that we have forgotten to mention here today. We pray for those needs that our heart cries out, that are too tender to put words on, Lord. You know all of our hearts. And for these, we just say, Lord, have mercy. We pray for peace in the church, in our hearts, and in our homes, and in the whole world. We pray blessing over all those who are graduating right now, that they will come to know you if they don't, and if they do, that they will continue to walk in your ways. Or bless them in all the places that they dwell, and all the people they encounter. We thank you for the gift of new visitors to this church today. We pray your blessing over Ashley and Rob, and all the places where they go. Lord, we're so thankful that they're here today. God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom as we commend our whole lives and one another into your hands, Father. So we gather all our prayers and praise together and pray with one voice as your Son, our Savior, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Our last hymn now is 398. Standing as you're able, we'll sing There is a Sweet, Sweet Spirit. <laughs> Thank you. 
birthday party for the church. So there's birthday cake and there's chicken salad and pimento cheese sandwiches. So I'm and Jessica, one other thing. If you'll do the change of the announcement for the women who worship, yes. a slight change there. Yes. Um, the women who worship, everyone is invited to come if you're not already coming. It starts now at 10 o'clock on Wednesdays. And that'll be for coffee and conversation. And then we'll start the Bible study around 1030-ish. That gives us time if we're running late or um, need extra coffee or whatever. We get to chat and uh, talk about prayer requests and pray for each other and the things that concern us. And then we have Bible study for about an hour. So 10 o'clock, not 1030. But come when you can. All right. So uh, let's all bless the food together, and then I'll pray this blessing over us all. God is great. God, God is, good. is good. Let us thank him for our food. food. By, By his hands, hands we all are fed. Thank, thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen. Now, receive this blessing as we go. Go out into the world and labor with God and the power of the Holy Spirit to bring forth new life. Dream dreams. Pursue visions and speak of God's goodness in the language of all those who would hear. And may the God who breathed life into creation always be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to all your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit set your hearts ablaze with a passion for seeking his face. In the name of the Father and the Son, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Joel's going to need to assign.